everybody, my name is Emma and this is my third video in my How to Record an Audiobook series. There should be one more after this. If you haven't seen the other videos, then I'll link those below. Perhaps you're here because you have already seen those. Um, and I also have a playlist of videos, including mine, but with some other, other content. Basically anything I found useful when I've been trying to figure out how to do this myself. So yeah, there's a whole playlist as well linked below just to help you out if you're trying to record your own audiobook because this isn't easy. So in my first two videos, the first one I talked about how to record, so you know, just literally what my setup is, including how I make like a makeshift um, sound studio. In my second video, I talked about how to edit your audio on GarageBand. And then in this video, I'm going to talk about mastering your tracks. And I'm basically adding in another step from when I recorded my my first audiobook, which is of Lily the Limpet Gets Lost. There's links below if you want to have a look. Um, and this has made a world of difference. It's something that I figured out this week. I really want to share with you how I'm, I'm doing this um, because I think it's really, really helpful. Um, but I'm going to give you a bit of background before I head over to my laptop to show you the, the technical side of things. So this is the third time that I have recorded the content for this audiobook. The first two times I ended up scrapping the audio largely because the microphone I was using wasn't really up to it. The audio was not very loud, it didn't have a very nice quality to it, and there was a really loud background hiss that I just couldn't get rid of. This time around I'm using the Blue Snowball, which I'm having much more luck with. It has a really nice sound, it's got quite nice loud audio, sounds good. It does still have a bit of a hiss though, which it may be room tone, I've reduced the room tone as much as I can, but it may be just to do with the fact that it's running through as a USB mic, it might be kind of just electrical noise, I don't know. I don't know the technical terms for these, I don't have a sound engineering qualification, I'm just learning as I go. But I cannot reduce the hiss by doing anything during my recording, I can't reduce it any more than I have. And what I was doing, and I talked about this in my editing video, was using the noise gate to reduce that sound. And all you do, as I explained in that video, is you go into your master um, settings and you can just click the noise gate on. And if you play with the settings, you should be able to get to a point where it will cut out that background noise. Now, the problem that I was having was that you get to a point where if you push the noise gate further to reduce the hiss, you also lose sounds like F, so like enough, you lose the f, um, you lose th as well, and f. Any any of those kind of sounds, there's probably a word for that collective group of sounds. And so my words were sounding weird because, uh, particularly if it's quite a pronounced way of saying those words, then I was losing that. And then when I was editing it together, I was really struggling to get those to fix that, to kind of pronounce it so that that sound wasn't so obvious, so that the noise gate wouldn't take it out, and then that was creating lots and lots of editing. So I was struggling with that, and it was if I take the noise gate um, up a bit, then I can hear the hiss, if I take it down, I can't hear some of my syllables. And I couldn't find a sweet spot. It may be for you that you can find a really nice sweet spot, and that works. And it worked for me on Lily the Limpet, but on this, where it's such a big project, it just, it helped, but it didn't fix it. The other side of things was that some of the audio just sounded, it, it was good, but not quite rich enough. Like it didn't have that sound that an audiobook or a podcast has of like a professionally recorded thing. I got talking to some friends of mine and was saying, I need to figure out before I go any further with this, how to get rid of that hiss because that doesn't sound right and how to improve the sound of the, uh, the, the, the actual sound quality as well. And I can't record anymore until I've done that, until I've fixed that and I know how to fix that. Essentially, in a nutshell, I have figured out how to fix that. Um, it's not necessarily the best way, it's just a way, it works really well. Um, 
and I'm going to talk you through it because this is how I'm going to be finishing off my files. I don't believe I'm going to do anything more with them once they've uh, in my next video I'll show how I export them and then how I upload them but essentially this is the last hopefully of the kind of digital fiddling around with it. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about how I tackle those two things to make sure that the sound quality is really really nice so once I've recorded it then what I do. So I'm going to head over to my laptop for this so that I can explain all the ins and outs of that and I hope you find this useful. Hi, here is my laptop screen. This is how GarageBand is looking at the moment. And so I'm going to talk to you about the changes that I've made, the things that I've done to make this sound as good as possible. So if we start off by having a look at my master settings, you can go into your settings here um, and we go into the master settings. Now you can play with these things and see how they sound. I really suggest when you're looking at making this sound as good as possible, Yes, you can look stuff up. Yes, you can look up tips to make things as good as you can, but use your own ears. See, you know, judge it. It really is one of those kind of creative things where you can trust what you can hear. So you can play with these things and see what effect that they have. But the main thing I looked at is the EQ. Now, what I have done, and it's not necessarily perfect, but I like the way that it's making my voice sound, is I went into here. Um, so. By the way, make sure you turn your EQ on, look, channel EQ. Go in here and select, I mean, you've got an on off button here, but still. Select some presets. These are your vocal presets. I quite like speaking voice improve as well. Try them out, see what sounds good on your voice, depending on the particular kind of makeup of your voice. It, it will depend on what sounds good. And then you can play with that. So I spent a long time playing. You can choose these colored areas and then that gives you a little nodule that you can move up or down or side to side. I don't want to move it too much um, because I don't want to mess up what I've got working, but well, I'll move one a lot so you can see that. Um, so have a play with those and see what you like the sound of. On this one, I believe I've deviated from the preset by adding this section here um, so that it dips off down here. Again, you can look up some kind of vocal EQ graphs and what hertz are good to have peaks on and troughs on and all of that. And actually, you can address a lot of the issues with background noise through the EQ. And it may be that that's enough. It depends on your camera, it depends on your setup. It wasn't enough for me, but it actually did quite a good job. And what it may allow you to do is to go back to your track settings and your noise gate, you may be able to either switch your noise gate off or just pull it back a bit. I was struggling, I kind of needed it down at about 35 to cut out the background hiss altogether, and that was cutting out a lot. If I could have pulled it back to about 45, maybe it could have worked, but I couldn't. I couldn't even pull it back beyond about 38. But as I say, you may be able to adjust your settings so that you can do that. So, but I've actually turned it off altogether. But just to give you a sense of what I'm working with. Preface. As quiet. I began to write these words, my 12 week old baby was sleeping in a mose. Now I'm sure that from where you are, you can't make out the hiss, you can't make out the sound quality um, because yeah, the screen is really not that close to the microphone. Now let's say that you're happy with how your voice sounds as I am, but you want to work on some background noises. So the hiss, maybe you've got things like dogs barking, or little weird clicks, breathing, all that kind of stuff that's a bit of a pain to edit out in GarageBand. What you need to do, select the track that you want to work with. So I'm just gonna do this on the introduction. Choose that track, make sure it's unmuted. Make sure that you've selected that track, then go to share, export song to disc, and choose this, export cycle area or length, um, and decide where you're gonna save it and what you're gonna call it, export. You'll notice, that it only selected that little area instead of the whole track to the, the longest um, piece of audio. So it will just do that one. Then what I'm gonna do is move over into Audacity. Now here in Audacity, um, I've dropped in that file that I just exported. Now you can actually record the whole thing in Audacity if you want. This is another free piece of software. It's just a download from the internet. And some people just use this for everything. I like GarageBand, so I'm using both 
you don't have to, there's tutorials out there how to record into Audacity. So if you want to just start with this, you can do. What you want to do to remove that background hiss is to choose an area that doesn't have any vocal on it because you don't want to affect the vocal. Then go to effect, go to noise reduction, and you want to say get noise profile. This will mean that your, um, your computer will analyze, or well, Audacity will analyze what waveform is in there. Then you want to select the whole track, go into effect, noise reduction. And I find these settings work, but you can play with the sensitivity and the noise reduction. And you want reduce, not residue. Let me show you what residue does. If I run residue, <laughs> that's not good. So that's quite handy if you want to really cut a sound out, but it's not useful for this. Undo. Now bear in mind when you do things, Audacity is a destructive program. What that means is once you've saved something, uh, the you can't get back the changes that you've made. So make sure you've got original files, um, keep bits at key points if you want to be able to go back to a certain point, um, but just be aware that it, it doesn't keep um, things as, as you go. So you have to be, you have to, you have to just be aware of that. Um, Anyway, if we just do reduce, then what you'll find is that once you run it, sometimes you get a countdown because this is such a short piece of audio. It's only 14 seconds long. Um, you're not getting that little countdown, but sometimes you get, get that and it will take maybe 15 seconds to do that little bit. Um, and sometimes I find it's good to do it a second time. So you want to go command R or you can just select effect, repeat noise reduction and it will do it again and keep doing it until you feel that it's removed the noise. Now, another option is if you've got a little clonk or something, I can't see anything, so let's choose something else. Right, let's imagine that this is, uh, I've banged about while I'm recording it. So select that, do the same thing. So for one thing, we can listen to that. Once I've selected it, you can listen to that isolated sound. So that's me saying the letter T. Okay, we're gonna take it out. So noise reduction, get the noise profile. Now it knows how that sounds. And then you can go into your noise reduction and you can remove it. Now you see that's just reduced it. So you can do that several times. Another option instead is to use the residue thing if you just want it gone. And that may have a more pronounced sound, uh, a pronounced effect. Um, as I say, you may have to do it multiple times to get it to disappear entirely. So you can use that if, like I said, a dog has barked or the postman knocked on the door or whatever it is, you can remove it. Another thing that I'd like to point out how to do is you can um, take an area, let's say, that, let's say that this pause is too long. Let's say it's that much too long. And what you can do is select that area, hit cut, which is here, and it's gone. So you can do things like that to, let's say this word was wrong. I can select that word and I can cut it. So you can also do that, which is really handy. I found in my edits that some of my pauses are a little bit too long. So rather than having to faff around in GarageBand where I have to kind of move everything that I've recorded and it's quite irritating, being able to just select and cut is gonna be a lot quicker. So I'm gonna do that in here as well. And this is how I'm gonna master it. I'm gonna take my, my finished pieces of audio, put them in here, take out any background noises, any weird breaths or any sounds um, and delete them. And what I've actually done is gone through and listened to everything I've recorded so far and made notes on what needs doing. Make sure you do listen to everything. I've already found two occasions where I have repeated a sentence that for some reason I didn't cut out in GarageBand. You make stupid mistakes sometimes. Check and check and double check yourself. Um, and this is a really good opportunity to do that. And even when you finish doing this, you probably should listen to the whole project again when it's totally finished in case there's something you've missed. Anyway, so yeah, import your file, have a listen to it, make any changes that you need to make to make it absolutely perfect. But I have found Audacity really good for this last little phase. I hope that you found that useful. If you did, hit like. As always, if you've got any tips, you've got particular videos that you find useful or anything like that, put it in the comments so that we can all share information with each other. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video, although the last episode of this audiobook section probably won't be for another month. But head over to my channel for other bookish and writing content and I will see you all soon.